For years I've been looking for a one-stop shop for emulation that would give me the experience of a console. Just turn it on, grab a controller, and play. As recently as a handful of years ago, we were still downloading specific emulators on PC to play certain systems. Dolphin for GameCube, Citra for 3DS. If you've messed around with emulation, you know this approach lacks elegance. It feels clunky. It feels like a hobby for computer nerds who already have a vast amount of technical knowledge. The settings and constant t tinkering to get games to run or run well can be overwhelming. A couple years ago, I had my first experience with an emulator front end, Lemuroid, which takes emulators like RetroArch and gives them a Netflix-like experience with game cover art, collections, a, a snazzy UI, and more importantly, just makes all your various ROMs just work. No downloading and installing emulators and cores, it's all there by default. Sure, you can tweak stuff if you want to, but this was an excellent experience when paired with a Razer Kishi controller and an Android phone. I made a video about this a while back and I'll link it in the comments. That brings us to 2024 and my journey with Batacera. Now to be clear, Batacera has been around for a long time. It's on its 38th or 39th version, but I only really heard about it in the last year or so from YouTubers like RGT85 talking about things like mini PCs running emulators. It's pretty common on Amazon and eBay to find these gaming hard drives loaded with like 20,000 games that you can plug into any computer and just boot into it. So I started doing some research. I already had tons of ROMs downloaded and several spare hard drives and thumbsticks laying around. Why should I pay some guy in China for a crappy portable drive when I could build my own, right? I started with an old i5 ThinkPad I had laying around and a 64 gig thumb drive. I found the Batocera image through a Reddit feed and learned that I had to use a package installer type program to flash the thumb drive. Raspberry Pi installer works great, so after watching a few tutorials, I was able to get it up and running in probably less than 20 minutes. The quirk with Batocera is that it's actually a distribution of Linux, an open source operating system similar to what Valve used for the Steam Deck. So unlike most standalone emulators, this is not a program that you run on a computer. It is the whole operating system. Most computers will need a little bit of mucking around in the, uh, the system BIOS to allow it to boot into a thumb drive, but after figuring that out, my life changed. I am now an emulation guy. Booting into Batacera for the first time, I'm greeted with an easy to understand interface. It can be completely controlled with a game controller. The only thing you really need a keyboard for is to get into the file management backend or do stuff like adjust screen brightness or music volume. I actually discovered later that you can do some of those things with the controller as well. Uh, so now we begin the process of loading the ROMs. There was a bit of a learning curve here as different systems need to have their ROMs presented in different ways. Some systems like to have them zipped and some like them unzipped. The default emulators used in Batacera sometimes need certain file types that may require downloading new ROMs or figuring out how to convert them. But all of this is very well explained by two YouTubers, and I want to give them a shout out, Batacera Nation and the Retro Gaming Guy. Every single question I had was explained uh, in a video by one of them. The next thing I had to find, and again, Reddit came through, was BIOS files. Many systems need BIOS files to make the games run right. I found a collection of many of the popular systems BIOS files on Reddit, and it was as easy as dragging them and dropping them into the BIOS folder. If you haven't figured out by now, I'm not the most tech-savvy dude on the internet, and this was all pretty easy to understand. My end goal here was to take this old iMac I had laying around that was too old to be useful in the Mac ecosystem and make an arcade machine out of it. So having figured out the basics, I set out to flash a 1TB hard drive and figure out how to get it installed in the iMac. Meet Franken-Mac. This is an iMac, 2008 iMac, that has a Batocera build on it. Uh, this has absolutely revolutionized the way that I look at emulation. Um, to be able to have all of these libraries just available to me at the touch of a button, to have this wonderful form factor here, 
uh, with this all-in-one computer, a nice screen, everything compact, not a whole bunch of wires running down to a big desktop computer or something. And you know what? The results here are absolutely fantastic. Some of the systems that I can emulate on this old Core 2 Duo with 4 gigs of RAM is absolutely astounding. We've got, of course, the old stuff like Atari 2600, 7800, Atari Lynx. Jaguar is a bit tough to emulate. My buddy Eric actually helped me with some of the BIOS files and some of the emulator files in order to get Jaguar working. ColecoVision and Intellivision, uh, they're all represented here. They don't actually work all that great because of controller issues. Of course, you know, they had those weird controllers with the number pads on them. Now, you can actually uh, assign buttons and things like that to make those things work, but that's kind of a pain and it's not really the way it's intended. But then, of course, one of my favorite systems of all time, the TurboGrafx-16, it's represented here as its kind of global name, the PC Engine. Uh, but to have a complete library of all of these games, and then all of the North American PC Engine uh, CD games, of course, like there's just some fantastic stuff here, Cotton and Castlevania, and just some absolutely fantastic things here. And all of this works just natively, right out of the box. As soon as you install Batocera, you drop some ROMs on it, you got to do a little bit of tweaking with BIOS files and stuff like that. But I was able to plug in this Mayflash uh, F300 arcade stick, which is a pretty generic uh, PC uh, with Xbox controls um, arcade stick. It works on a lot of stuff. I was able to plug it in, recognizes it right away. It does give you the option to, uh, you know, assign your own buttons, your own button layouts and stuff like that if you want to. Uh, and then, of course, we've got all of the, the basic Nintendo stuff. Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Virtual Boy, N64 runs great on here. Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. I'm having a ton of fun exploring the Game Boy Advance library in this new form fat, uh, factor, of course. Uh, I made a video a couple of years ago talking about emulation on an Android phone with the Razer Kishi, and I explored a lot of these libraries back then on the Android phone, but having this, uh, you know, available in this, whatever this is, 20, 22 inches or, you know, whatever, it looks fantastic. The resolution that's native to this old machine matches really, really well with a lot of these older games. I'll just show you uh just for the heck of it advance wars 2 uh what the game looks like i'll turn some volume on here and uh you can just you can see how great this is you've got this border around it that makes you, makes you feel like you're using a game boy advance and everything just boots up and runs absolutely fantastic as you can see here then of course all of the, uh, you know, all of the old Sega greats, the Master System, the Sega Genesis, the Game Gear, even Sega CD runs fantastic on here. And the great thing about all of these older games, all of this stuff you see here up to this point is pretty much complete libraries, at least complete North American libraries. Uh, and it takes up like no space, even like the Sega CD and the TurboGrafx CD doesn't take up that much space. I have a one terabyte spinning hard drive, which I had to install internally in this iMac, and you can see this other iMac off to the side as well, that I'm also building the same way. And, uh, you know, it's a bit of a process to get inside here. You gotta pull this glass off the front, and then you have to pull the bezel off the front and pull the actual LCD panel. Uh, up and out in order to get at where the hard drive is but in the grand scheme of things it's not that hard to do uh, and it's something you can do you know watch a YouTube tutorial and maybe 20 or 30 minutes you can get a hard drive installed in these as I said this one has four gigs of RAM this one has three gigs of RAM they both pretty much per perform the same way even with the three gigs this one over here seems to work pretty darn good but uh, getting into some of the bigger stuff, Sega Saturn, for example, uh, I have 143 Sega Saturn games installed on here. And as I said, this is a one terabyte drive and it's by no means full. I think it's about 600 gigabytes or so at this point in time, the entire 32X library. Dreamcast, we have 74 games represented here. And uh, I had about 
38 or so, and then my buddy Eric actually helped me f find some great uh, imports and English translated stuff. There's just tons of fantastic stuff in here. There's like, what do we say, 72 games or something. Uh, I've tried out several of these games. Uh, Elemental Gimmick Gear is super uh, enjoyable. Chaos Field is really neat. Uh, I enjoy that. There's so many great games in here. And then Neo Geo was another one that we had a bit of a problem with, or at least I had a bit of a problem with, because I'm not the, you know, the most techie guy in the world, but uh, uh, my buddy Eric helped me again. Thanks, shout out to Eric for uh, getting the Neo Geo working. It was a problem with the emulator I was using, and I think the, the, the file type of the ROMs that I had was wrong. So we had to re-download, but now being able to play all of these classic Neo Geo uh, arcade and console games, stuff like the Middle Slug series and King of the Fighters, just, you know, fantastic stuff. All in all, uh, I think there are about 8,500 games and counting on this system, even stuff like the Neo Geo Pocket Color, and then going over to the PS1, uh, I have 334 PS1 games on here. Uh, I have 83 PSP games on here, and that pretty much represents everything that is on here. But the great thing about this is that all of this stuff is playable almost without any tweaking on this particular system. I have several other builds of Battlesera that I'm working on. I have some uh, on a i5 ThinkPad laptop that I may show you in the B-roll. Uh, it's got a 2 terabyte SSD in it, and it's quite capable of running PS2, GameCube, uh, original Xbox. I have yet to test Wii on it, but I believe that Wii will run. And then I have an external build on an external hard drive, which can be plugged into other computers. And when I plug that into my gaming computer over here, I'm actually able to play PS3 games uh, like absolutely seamlessly on that device. So uh, if you're looking for a way to you know, create an arcade machine in your house on the cheap, you can find one of these 2008 iMacs for anywhere from about $50 to $100 Canadian, probably cheaper in the States. Uh, I paid about $100 for this one at Value Village, which is our version of Goodwill. This one I actually found at a pawn shop for $40. Bucks. And uh, they're, they're identical machines, and uh, this will run every, everything up to, you know, PSP, as you saw here. And there's probably more systems that I could get running. I've experimented with, you know, older stuff like Commodore 64 and ZX Spectrum. And all that stuff runs fine, but it's kind of a challenge getting it to work with the controls and stuff. A lot of them rely on specific keyboard inputs and that sort of thing that... You know, as I monkey around with this stuff more and get more experience with it, I'll probably be able to figure out. But honestly, there's not a lot of games in those libraries that I care about all that much. So, you know, this is the stuff I really care about. And what I found myself going back to are libraries that I didn't have a lot of exposure to, you know, back in the day. Things like the PSP and checking out all of the amazing... Uh, JRPGs on that library, and the N64, which I always kind of trashed. I always, you know, sort of made fun of the N64, but I'm discovering as I dig into the library that there are some fantastic games to be played on the N64, weird controls notwithstanding. Uh, I'm really enjoying the Game Boy Advance. That's one of my favorite libraries that I never experienced back in the day. So if this is something you're interested in doing, absolutely reach out to me. I will give you all the tools and resources to make something like this happen at your own house. Don't go out to, you know, eBay and buy one of the, those, you know, Chinese $250 hard drives or whatever. I mean, unless you want to. It's nice to have it all set up and ready for you. It is quite a bit of work to actually get this personalized to the way you want it. There are several different options for scraping from different websites to get uh, sort of the different uh, cover art and, uh, you know, things like that. You can choose to have video displays, uh, you know, on the menu of the different games that you want. You can also download the manuals for many, many games, um, which you can, you know, access and look at the manual here on the screen. 
Uh, you can download music, like video game music, from the internet and load it on here so you have your own selection of music. So there's a lot of ways that you can really, really customize this arcade machine to make it your own. The other thing to note is that you can hook up a whole lot of different controllers to this system. So you see I've been using this arcade stick, but a generic third-party Xbox wired controller works fantastic and if you are using a newer computer that has Bluetooth uh, you can actually hook up an Xbox One or Xbox Series controller to this and it will just work natively out of the box. Uh, another great controller that I found specifically for the retro games is this 8-bit Go M30 controller with a 2.4 gigahertz dongle. I have that plugged into this machine here and when you're playing virtually anything that didn't require uh, an analog thumbstick, uh, you know, anything that runs off a D-pad, uh, so your Game Boy Advances, your NES, Super NES, Genesis, all that kind of stuff is fantastic on this controller. This is about $35 Canadian. The D-pad is maybe the best D-pad I've felt in like 30 years. It's fantastic. Having this uh, you know, six button layout similar to the Saturn controller and the Genesis six button controller. You've got shoulder buttons up here like, like the SNES, the, the, you know, just the two left and right. Uh, it's fantastic. I love this controller and I use this more than anything on those retro games. But anyways, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments. Are you interested in trying to build your own Batacera arcade machine? Is this something you want to do? Reach out to me in the comments. I would be more than happy to share the websites, the links where you can get all of the things you need, like the installer program and the BIOS files and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, more people need to know how fantastic an experience this is. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay classy.